Okay, so. Um, 
So what we're doing is we're taking comment blocks in our CSS. You write the example code in the CSS, and it parses it out, and it will generate the style guide from it. And I wanted to show you guys this. OK. So there's that. Um, and if you notice, there's actually a there's multiple themes. So we actually have a dark and a light theme. We have a desktop and a mobile theme. The desktop isn't, isn't uh, up yet, but it's coming soon. But we're focusing on mobile right now because we wanted to get big book out fast. Uh, the main takeaway that we got while building these phone gap applications were that users didn't care if it was native or not. As long as the application performed correctly and didn't feel wonky, they were happy with it. So ditching your phone gap app actually wasn't necessary. Uh, if you got the, the performance that you needed and you got the, the feel right, which brought us to our first tenant and said, well, we should go performance first then. To really focus on performance for this library, because no one else was doing that. And I actually asked around, I thought about it a lot, like, how would you actually test uh, performance of CSS? And there were a couple of wonky ways to do it, but there was nothing really substantial that I could find. So while digging around in Chromium source, we found telemetry, which is a way to benchmark your, your, web, your web pages. And it takes um, CSS into account. So, when it comes to performance, you can't really take my word for it, you can't take anyone's word for it. You actually have to see the data. You have to go in and look and say, well, is it getting slower or faster? Because with the new evergreen browsers, uh, they could do an update that would make a uh, hack you have, make your app actually slower, your CSS slower or faster. You wouldn't really know unless you had constant data that way. So we created this bench.taco.io. Is that one working? Yay! Okay. Um, so what this does is every time we do a push or release, it'll actually benchmark our web page. We have these uh, different tests for the different components. And it's also getting slower or faster, right? Which is great, because then I can see, well, something happened here, and I actually have a commit that I can go to and figure out what I did to slow down my CSS. And that's not all. I can go and check out against the baseline. So we made resets. We separated our our components into reset classes, which give you a baseline, just black and white, nothing. And then we have our skins on top of that with the extend. And so we can actually test against our reset classes to see, well, if that's as fast as we can possibly get, how far off from the fastest are we with our style? And can we bring that down a little bit? Let's just see it over time. So the next part, now that we've started making these components and having these available, these patterns available, we wanted to actually start building things with it and seeing, you know, how hard is it to make these look up apps? Can we actually get something performant? And can we get something that's beautiful um, and test it out? So we started making this any conference that was going to be an example app. It's available now on GitHub, and I can show you a demo of it. Uh, Taco into your phone app applications. But this is the actual 
repo for the, the any conference folk MTA edition. You can go and check it out. And there's a couple things I wanted to point out um, that I think are interesting for this. So what we're trying to do is really lean on CSS. So all of our transitions are separate, right? We're separating concerns. You have your styling, which is just our class names for what the buttons look like and the header looks like and whatnot. Then you have your layout classes, which are separate from that, so we're not confusing styling and layout. And then we have our transitions, which are also separate from that. So most of our JavaScript, all it's doing is adding or moving classes to get transitions, right? So you're not having this really crazy JavaScript framework just to get um, the slide in, slide out, and then actually use string uh, CSS transitions for that. Like that. Um, we do a lot of naming convention work, so everything that's attached with JavaScript uses the JS naming convention, JS dash naming convention, and we also use um, namespacing pretty heavily for our, our top code style. So you have like top code dash for your button or whatnot. Um, and this is extended with theming, so if you make your own theme, you can actually have your own namespace. So you have you know, your phone gap dash button, or any conference dash button. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Hey, I have another phone thing. Oh, it's working on here. Okay, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Got fixed. No, it didn't. This is just a cash version. <laughs> is it back up? Yes. Woohoo! I'm getting tweaks in my pocket. That's really sick. Uh, okay, so let's go. Let's go and show you one of these. Yeah. This will work too. Right? I'm going to use the sketch. Nope. Come on.
again, this is really early. We've only been working on this for about five months. And it's a different type of open source. It's open source, not open source. We wanted to work in the open. Instead of saying, we've got this thing all that's awesome, we finished it, and then you guys get to use it. We're actually, we've been working in the open from day one. So the very first commit was live on GitHub. And the reason we do that is so we can get community feedback. So as people would use it, they could say, oh, I hate this, or I love this, or I don't like that, and I wish it had this. And or they can contribute themselves. We actually are actively looking for contributors to um, add components, themes, styles, whatever they want. Um, I think this is a much better way to go about things. I think it's a little different than what people are used to. And so I, I've noticed that people are hesitant to file issues or whatnot. I say, bring them on, please. Go ahead and file issues. Uh, here's your feedback you really, really, really want to know. Pop.io, it, it's actually back up now, <laughs> so you can go see it later. I'm Dan on Twitter, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>